function notation. In this video, you'll learn how to use function notation to express functions that have specific inputs and outputs. You'll also learn what function notation is and why it exists. So let's look at function notation. Function notation is a concise way to represent functions using symbols like f parentheses x. x represents the independent variable and f of x represents a dependent variable. So if we have the function notation, for example, f of x, then f tells us the name of the function, x will tell us the input of the function, and the entire f of x will tell us the output of the function. So let's practice by writing all of these situations in function notation. We'll start with the cost of a taxi ride for two miles is $5.70. So we'll take our function f of x, and we know that the input was two miles. So we'll replace x with two. The output of our function, which is given by the total cost, is $5.70. So we can say that f of two is $5.70. Now we have the total pay for working six hours at $10 an hour. So we'll take our function notation, and since we know that the input is six hours, we'll replace x with six. And we don't know the output, but we do know that they get paid $10 for working each hour. So if we work six hours, then our function would be equal to $60 since six times 10 is 60. Now we have that a car travels at 35 miles per hour and has driven for three hours. This time we'll use g of x as function notation. The letter f doesn't always have to be used. We can use any variable we choose. So we know that the car has driven for three hours. So our input of x will become three. Now we don't know the output of the function, but we do know that the car travels at 35 miles per hour. So we can multiply the three hours by 35 miles per hour, which would give us an output of 105 miles. Let's look at another example. Function C gives the cost in dollars of buying n apples. What does each expression represent in this situation? So we have C of five equals $4.50, and then we just have C of two. So we just wanna break down these equations or expressions and determine what they mean in terms of this function. So we know that the function was called C, so we'll call this C of n. Function C gives the cost. So that tells us that the output of this function will give us the total cost. And we know that we get the total cost by putting in n apples as the input. So n will represent the apples. So if we look at our first example of C of five equals $4.50, then this represents five apples. And since our output is $4.50, then we know that five apples cost $4.50 altogether. The next expression just says C of two. So all we know is that this will represent the cost of two apples, but we don't know the exact cost yet because they didn't give us an output. Here's another example. Function f gives the distance of a dog from a post and feet as a function of time in seconds since its owner left. We wanna find f of 20 and f of 140. To find f of 20, we'll go to 20 on the x-axis and go up until it hits our function line. So this tells us that f of 20 must be 3 feet. To find f of 140, we'll go to 140 on the x-axis and go up until it hits our function line. This one hits at 3.5 feet. Now we have that the height of a water in a bathtub, w, is a function of time t. We'll let p represent this function. Height is measured in inches and time is in minutes. So it says that we'll let p represent this function. So we'll start by labeling our function p. This is a function of time t. So our input variable this time is t. Since the function will tell us the height of water in a bathtub, the height is going to be the output of this function. Now we'll use this function to represent each equation below in terms of the situation it represents. So the input will tell us the time and the output will tell us the height. So for p of zero equals zero, this tells us at zero minutes, the height is zero inches. 
Now we have P of 10 equals 4. This tells us after 10 minutes, the height is 4 inches. Now we'll go up to P of 4 equals 10. This tells us after 4 minutes, the height is 10 inches. And finally, we have P of 20 equals 0. So this tells us that after 20 minutes, the height is 0 inches. Here's one last example. Function C takes time for its input and gives a particular student's Monday class for its output. So we'll use C of x to represent this function, where our input, or x, represents the time, and the output of C of x gives us the class that the student is in. For each statement, we'll write this in function form. So first we have the student has English at 10 o'clock. So we can write the input as 10 o'clock, and our output would be English. Next we have at 11.15, the student has chemistry class. So our input will be the time of 11.15, and our output will be the chemistry class. Now let's recap what we've learned. Function notation is a concise way of referring to a function and describing its input and output. For a function f of x, x represents the input and the value of f of x represents the output. To find the value of a function given a graph, we can look at the y value at the given x value. 